I think some teams are looking at him, man. They're definitely looking at him, man. That's a running back if I ever saw one. Running back. Now, nah, that's a defensive lineman, man. He, that's he, Dwight he, he Freeney. Yeah. That's yeah, Dwight exactly, Freeney. Man. That's, man. that's definitely Simeon Rice, man. Let me get um let me get another city, man. Whew, Jesus Christ. Whew, Cincinnati, man. Yikes. Memphis, man. Oh God, Memphis. Shit. <laughs> Memphis oh. will never hey, let you down. Did you cover Jaheim McMillan yet? Who's that? Yeah, we just did uh, the Jaheim kid that got earlier, that got shot in Gulfport. Yeah, we just did that. Yeah, we and did unarmed that. with his hands up. Yeah, he yeah, he, he wasn't doing <laughs> nothing, man. Um <laughs> Y'all, y'all did Philly already? We've been busy. We, we did. We did. We, we we started off with a story from Philly, but Philly, we did that last night. Um, oh, Memphis, Memphis, Memphis. We're taking you back now to breaking news at the Walmart off Winchester and 385. I always Damn. with the fucking Walmart. <laughs> like, like, I've been, like, 95% of Walmart shootings are fucking sons. But the national perception when you think of someone shooting up a Walmart is a glider. We're taking you back now to breaking news at the Walmart off Winchester and 385 where shots have been fired inside that store. WRG's Bria Jones is live with an update after talking to police. Bria? Well, Greg and Seth, we just heard from MPD at the top of the show. They said that no injuries have been reported after reports of shots fired here at the Walmart here on Winchester near 385. I want to step out of the way. I want you to just yeah, please do so we can at least see the fucking store. Yeah, I mean, you got behind me. You can see there are still some employees Damn, um, that are here at the front of the store. I'm you know I love breathe. They actually yeah. can't leave because they are considered witnesses. Now, here's what we do know from Memphis Police. What we just heard from spokesperson Sergeant Lewis Brownlee during that press conference. They say that several employees, several people actually inside the store. Damn, all sons ain't a fuck. Ain't a goddamn. <laughs> lurking <laughs> and murking. <laughs> Called to 911 reporting that a man fired several shots inside of the store. Now, police tell us that they have swept this store multiple times. They're currently looking for any shell casings that may indicate that the shots were actually fired. But we're told that because, of course, this is a large big box store, those shell casings could be anywhere if there are any here. Now, again, we have at least five to 10 MPD cruisers here still on the scene. We're told that officers are currently looking to review any surveillance video. And, of course, they will bring us any updated information but now reporting live in southeast memphis bria jones WR- okay non-contact shooting at walmart that's probably all we're gonna see for the night right you know pretty quiet <laughs> night man um uh let's see what else is might be going on here man um okay i'm alert an 18 year old is facing charges tonight after police say she fired shots at several people in Frazier. This incident happened last week, just a few blocks from a high school. WRG's Mike Siriani tells us what police say led to that shooting. 18-year-old Albany Carlisle is charged with... Albany Carlisle. Hmm. Damn, that's a rough-looking system. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't really know. Oh, I thought that was, was a dude, man. Not. No, yeah. it's not a dude, man. They led to that shooting. 18 year old Albany Carlisle is charged with aggravated assault after allegedly firing several shots near the intersection of Steel Street and Fraser Boulevard just after noon, February 15th. According to police, Carlisle was firing at several youngsters, one of them a student from MLK College Preparatory High School, who had reportedly. <laughs> <laughs> Some youngsters. Oh, God damn. <laughs> yo, they, yo, my God! Yeah, I would love to see the test scores at MLK College Preparatory High School. Never fails, and okay. No yes. students proficient in this. No student proficient. In this. God, no. Jeez. Lee been involved in a fight earlier that day with two other students and was suspended. Police say the student was being escorted home by her siblings when the two girls she'd been fighting with, along with several other people, got out of a black Nissan Maxima and started assaulting them in the 1400. Pulling up. Not- <clears throat> it's never over until somebody gets a beating, is it? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's why I tell you guys, like, it's like, don't 
don't think like that white woman in fucking um, South Carolina. She argued and then she turned around and started. No, it's not over. Even when you're leaving the scene, it's not over. It's not over. Even when you're in your house, they'll come shoot up your house. It's never over. Ever. Just can't Vince take an hour. And was suspended. Police say the student was being escorted home by her siblings when the two girls she'd been fighting with, along with several other people, got out of a black Nissan Maxima and started assaulting them in the 1400 block of Fraser Boulevard. Investigators say Carlisle is the sister of one of the high school girls involved in the earlier fight, and she retrieved a black and pink handgun from the Maxima and started shooting at the victims. No one was hit by the gunfire, but one youngster was injured during the physical assault. No one related to the victims or suspect wanted to talk, but a spokesperson with Fraser Community Schools emailed this response, quote, we are aware of the incident that happened off campus on February 15th involving at least three of our students. While we always strive to ensure our students' safety, incidents occur outside of school and in the community that we are unaware of and unable to control. However, our staff will always do whatever we can to keep our students and staff safe at school and whenever possible. In Fraser, Mike Suriami, WRE. Okay. The school ain't snitching either, so. <laughs> yeah, man. They got to they gotta you know, live there, man. They got to be there. I want to know who's going on the Indeed job app and hitting the buttons to say teacher and shit. Hey, who, Mayo who, dropped who that in the for... back. Mayo yeah. dropped that school info in the back chat. It's three out of ten. It's it's not horrible for a sun school. Three out of ten, yeah. That's, that's pretty decent. Most sun schools are one out of ten on great schools that. Uh, that's not bad, man. Yeah, that's my favorite memory of him was uh, always teaching me to do the right thing. From looking at these dance moves, it's no wonder why Melvin Parker says his brother, 63 year old Marvin Parker, will that's forever. That's a 63 year old man dancing like that. <laughs> he was killing me. My favorite memory of him was uh, always teaching me to do like right uh -huh. <laughs> From looking at these dance moves, nah. it's... Is that you, Reese? Is that, is that you, Reese, out there for the block? Uh, if, he's, if he's 63, he was listening to funk music and watching Dolomite and shit. <laughs> Those, them, that's the modern dances, man. That's the shit Kodak right Black and them be doing, man. <laughs> yeah. It's no wonder why Melvin Parker says his brother, 63-year-old Marvin Parker, will forever be known as the life of the party. He says his big brother adored his family and enjoyed helping others. He, he helped people in the neighborhood. He uh, basically was a great guy overall. Sadly, these memories are all Parker and his family have left after his brother mm. was brutally killed earlier this month. Parker says his brother was killed over money. He could have called me and asked me for the fifty dollars or eighty dollars. Derek what Wallace. What the fuck? Wait a minute. Oh, <sighs> God. And we gotta hear about some fucking glider over here talking about some. Oh, it's because of gang initiations and all this, that, the third. No, it's over fifty bucks, man. Killed over less than one hundred dollars. Derek Rawlings is charged with second-degree murder in Marvin's death. MPD says the killing happened inside this home on Staten Avenue. He lured my brother to the spot where it actually happened. And once he thought he killed my brother, he picked him up, put him in his truck, drove him from the North Memphis side area to the Orange Mound area side and left him for dead. Family says Marvin was... Hey, that's not in the spirit of Dr. King, man. Did he leave him for dead, or did he just dump the dead body? Because he's probably already dead. I think I know how this happened. Y'all, y'all remember the card game in the beginning of Harlem Nights? Yeah. Oh, you talking about? That's, um, I think you talking about uh, Menace to Society. No, nah, the card game when, oh, okay. when Eddie Murphy oh, was a young boy and caught his first body. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. 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 That guy was like, "You got my money, motherfucker." <laughs> yeah, that was also minister society, man. I oh yeah, 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 yeah. I told you I give your fucking money when I get around to it, man. Yeah, he did you five years in the joint. <laughs> yeah, decided and left him for dead. 
Family says Marvin was remodeling the home for someone else and asked Rawlings to help. On the day of the killing, the police say Marvin was on the phone with an acquaintance when they overheard an altercation between Marvin and the suspect. Marvin's body was later found on South Greer Street. Oh, so he asked the guy to help him remodel the house. And the guy was like, all right, I get, where my fucking money at? I worked for you yesterday. You said you're going to pay mm. me $80 a day. And Marvin was probably like, man, don't worry, man. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get you. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to take care of you. That nigga was like, nah, man, I'm going to jail for the my life. Now. Yeah, exactly. That <laughs> guy in the chat says I mean, so 50 bucks is a whole lot. Back. It's a whole Hennessy bottle. Yeah. 50 bucks is a goddamn some dope, some good dope, too. Whole lot he of dope fucked up and money. called the connect before he had the money, and the connect is on the way. So he has to get yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, he like, man, you got my fucking money? He's like, man, don't, see, the, the, the people ain't giving me the money yet. I'm waiting on them. It's like, mm. nah, motherfuckers. Yeah, and it was the argument. It wasn't the 50 bucks. It was bitch-ass nigga. What? Bitch-ass yeah. nigga. Oh, oh, oh. It was the argument that, that got to Says Marvin was remodeling the home for someone else and asked Rawlings to help. On the day of the killing, the police say Marvin was on the phone with an acquaintance when they overheard an altercation between Marvin and the suspect. Marvin's body was later found on South Greer Street. So we just thought that he had, he was, he got hit from the behind and was stabbed and beaten to death. We just found out last night that he got shot in the face also. Now, right next door to the crime scene, Memphis oh. police say they found bloody clothing inside well, of this tri- abandoned strip vehicle they say one of the articles of clothing was a camouflage jacket look how this like, dirty is it's right. just, your name yeah, is there Kwame are places Misha, in ukraine God. that look better than this right now they got a woman named kwamisha in the news Fuck yeah kwamisha man kwamisha been there for a minute man kwamisha been doing her thing kwamisha doing all right in this nakedly racist country yeah go ahead kwamisha Right next door to the crime scene, Memphis police say they found bloody clothing inside of this abandoned stripped vehicle. They say one of the articles of clothing was a camouflage jacket that had the word worth sewn onto it. Rawlings was identified as the suspect after surveillance video caught him wearing the same jacket that was found at the crime scene. A warrant was issued for his arrest. Parker says they plan on being at every court hearing until justice is fully served. Premeditated murder, no bond, basically. That's what the family would push for. Reporting from North Memphis, Kwamitra Wilborn, WREG, New Channel 3. Well, as that family mourns tonight, Rawlings is in jail on a $350,000 bond, and he is due back in court on Monday. Wow. Wow. Jesus Christ, man. That's so- so I don't look now. It's a thirty-eight percent random glider. What's thirty-eight percent random glider? The pole. Oh, oh, you talking about? Um, okay, <laughs> so yeah, so yeah, they. Hey, Bill did all right, man. Bill did all right. Gladman did. Gladman did decent, man. Gladman did decent, man. You just gotta, you gotta remember to say the. Fucking improv, man. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, yeah. Let's see what else is going. On. God damn it. This evening, a South Haven crossing guard is recovering after being hit while directing traffic outside of school this morning. Family identify him as Mark Patton and tells us he's been a crossing guard at the school for 10 years. WREG's Jordan James has the latest on the investigation and changes parents want to see moving forward. Along this busy stretch of Getwell Road. Everybody's in a hurry. Everybody's trying to get to where they're going. Traffic came to a halt Friday morning after a crossing guard was hit by a vehicle outside of DeSoto Central Primary School just as classes were getting underway. I have three kids that are in the district. And like I said, I just want everybody to just be mindful because, you know, you never know when it could be your child, your loved one. Investigators with the South Haven Police Department say the crossing guard was wearing proper safety gear when the incident occurred. They also say the driver who hit the crossing guard stayed on the scene. Okay. 
that's good. Salute to the driver staying on the scene, man. That was, I don't know what that says about the driver, but. Look at Tennessee lawmaker. We are partially responsible for the uh, rape of uh, the Eliza. What's her name? Cleotha guy. And another issue drawing attention at the Capitol is the TBI's handling of rape kits. Oh, yeah, they did this. They, they got too many rape kits. It takes oh, them yeah. fucking too long to fucking process all He was like Roland Martin, you <laughs> A bullet between the eyes and half of his skull is missing, but a young Memphis Damn. man is on the mend and talking tonight after being shot in the head while driving on I-240. What Hello, I'm Greg Hurst. Hi, I'm Stephanie Skurlock. Tonight, he is sharing what he remembers about the shooting only with our Bria Jones. She joins us live now with that story. Bria? Well, Greg and Steph, this is truly an incredible story. Now, the victim was driving home from work when he was shot in the head. Now, tonight, he's alert and able to tell his story. Shot between the eyes and now living with a bullet still lodged in his brain. Lincoln Galdonez is at the start of his miraculous road to recovery. I'm just grateful to be alive right now. Galdonez, a 2021 Christian Brothers High School graduate, spent his 20th birthday at Regional One. He's now without a large piece of skull missing to allow his brain to swell. I'm pretty sure My this is the entry wound, wound, but it didn't exit. Memphis police say he was shot in the head on February 5th after two people opened fire on I-240 near Perkins in broad daylight. Galdonez says he was leaving work at FedEx when he saw a car speed by. I saw two people looking back towards someone and then those same two people just like climbed out of the window, started hanging and then... <laughs> can I give the well, story? we've solved this one. I think we can wrap this up. <laughs> This kid, too, this kid fucking had nothing to do with this shit at all. Nothing. Christ. Hi. I saw two people looking back towards someone, and then those same two people just, like, climbed out of the window, started hanging, and then I saw the a gun, and then they just started shooting. Multiple bullets hitting Galdonez's car, one piercing his windshield, and the rest was a blur. I was bleeding a lot, and I was, like, dripping blood throughout the car, so... But I didn't know this happened. Trying to escape danger, Galdonez Dang. crashed into a guardrail. A witness who also happened to be a co-worker he'd never met pulled over to help. Galdonez says doctors are amazed by his progress and say his skull might be able to be reattached by late spring. What the Jesus fuck? Fucking no. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Super man. lucky that was a glancing blow that missed most of his brain. He said, glancing, it went through his eyes and came out the back of his head. What are it, you talking it went, about? It, no, it, it, went, his eyes. It, it went on the brow ridge above his eye and hit the side of his skull and blew the skull out without taking much of the brain or damaging much of the brain. He was super lucky. Yes. Shout out to Modern Medicine. Hold on, let me, let me see. Shot between the eyes and now living with a bullet still lodged in his brain. Lincoln Galdona. Exit. Memphis police say. This is the entry room wound, but it didn't exit. Memphis police say he was shot in the head on February 5th. Oh, the bullet's still in there. It didn't exit. The bullet's still in there. Shout out to God. Thanks, Brown Sugar. Shit. It pulled over to help. Galdonez says doctors are amazed by his progress and say his skull might be able to be reattached by late spring. My balance is pretty not there yet. I'm technically a fall risk. I just have to wear a helmet while I walk. With no arrest in the case, he's asking one question. Why? Why did you do this? As he leans on his family. Because the other dudes in the other car they were shooting at Bryce. Cut uh, him off and look at him. <laughs> a reason so petty it would probably fucking shock you to death. Yeah, it's probably better you don't know. Cause now you can like you can do like a glider and be like act like it was this big fucking thing and tell your friends like yeah it was this big fucking scenario that I got fucking my head blown off for. Family and friends. For support. I guess I'm just happy to be alive. Happy to have a support system like I do. 
His family has started a GoFundMe account to help with medical expenses and eventually get him a new car. If you'd like to help, you can find the link on our website, WREG.com. For now, reporting live downtown, Bria Jones, WREG News, I'm Channel missing. 3. The family oh, offering up prayers of thanks tonight, for you. thanks. Rest I'm Memphis out. Man. I saw a pretty... Um, a bullet... A wild story in Chicago with a, a pregnant woman uh, carjacked and run over. Dang. Yeah, I was in Chicago, uh, Chicago, I believe. Libertyville, a suburb of Chicago, I think. As prosecutors yeah. continue to weigh charges, the victim's relatives expressing frustration and accusing authorities of keeping them in the dark. Flowers and candles mark the spot where they lost their patriarch. For the family of Donald Carter Sr., there's prayer but no peace. I'm angry. This was my last brother. What, what happened to the rest? And he did not deserve this. This gathering at the end of a day of grief and remembrance. Earlier, mourners gathered for Carter's funeral in Country Club Hills. 12 days after, the retired auto mechanic was killed while behind the wheel. Police say three 13-year-old boys in this stolen Kia slammed into Carter on February 12th as he pulled out of his Robbins apartment Damn. complex. Damn. So he didn't... Three 13-year-old boys. They slept. They were, they were flying. Wow. Damn. You gotta... Be, and listen, and they man. they him in the driver's side, so... Yeah, it wasn't much him instantly. It, and, they'll, and they won't do a day in jail for this... <laughs> Who's killed more people, the Kia boys or the Proud Boys? I think the Kia boys up a couple thousand, man. Proud Boys still yeah, haven't got on the board yet. Yeah, I don't think it's close. You can put Ashley Babbitt on there. Like they, their actions led to Ashley Babbitt's death. You can give them one. <laughs> but the Kia boys got um, in the thousands, man. Um, well, I guess you could say uh, the, the Patriot Prayer member because he attended their rally, you know, and pissed yeah, off the leftists. Two. Yeah, that's two. Give him, give him, give him two, two ish, two and a possible. <laughs> um, yeah, man. Golly, man, they slid. They were going fast, man. Was, mm, mm. Carter on February twelfth, as he pulled out of his Robin's apartment complex. You just killed my daddy. Oh, all over a car that you not you nothing to make no money off of it. Police arrested the three juveniles near the scene, but then released them to their families pending charges. As <laughs> wow. <laughs> what the fuck? Unauthorized use of an automobile. <laughs> Hit and run. <sighs> <laughs> no, those poor juveniles. They, they they just need supervision, so we need to give them back to their parents that can't supervise them ever. Whose car were they in? The stolen car, probably. It was probably a stolen car. It was a borrowed car. Huh? Police arrested the three oh, juveniles okay. near the scene, but then released them to their families pending charges. As Carter's family waits, today the Cook County State's Attorney's Office told ABC7 it's still reviewing the case. Whether it's the village or the state's attorney's office, arrest these young men and bring charges and stop passing the buck. Carter, who was oh, hold up, sister. Those aren't sister. young men, those are savages. Sister, you've been these sisters. She doesn't understand that she's gonna vote for Kim Fox next time. She's gonna vote for Lori <laughs> Lightfoot. It's just they just don't get it. Everybody here is gonna vote for Lori Lightfoot and Kim Fox. Carter, and who was 70, leaves behind every six time... children and 20 grandchildren. Damn, and every time, uh it doesn't happen to her she's like oh the poor kid oh the poor kid when it happens to her then it's dang somebody needs to pay selfishness man these people are these people i mean it's just it's not a community man it's not a community carter who was 70 leaves behind six children and 20 grandchildren and lingering questions about his death we're not going to stop um, keeping this in the media, keeping it on the forefront. Um, I know this community will never forget about it. Earlier this week, the family filed a lawsuit <laughs> against the village. He said the community will never forget him. There have been three murders since this happened. What, did, right? what just happened last week? Man, it's been fucking 
15 murders since this happened. What are you talking about? And if I had another 45 15... murders since it happened in the community in Chicago. Right. What are you talking about? These people are crazy. What's up, Brown Sugar? Hey, y'all. Uh... Brown hey. Sugar, babe. Don't forget high off love. Don't know how to be. You sound sad, girl. <laughs> No, I'm just on the weather a little bit. Oh, okay. Okay. He got, he got a little cold. Get about it. Earlier this week, the family filed a lawsuit against the village of Robbins, alleging the crash was in part the result of a police pursuit. A village spokesperson and the police chief. Oh, they're blaming the police because the police were pursuing the sons in the car. I wouldn't be a police for nothing right now. Golly, man. Fuck that man it's a sucky ass job man police just need a tractor beam or something so they can't run jesus christ man um oh the mayoral race let's see what's going on the mayoral race. now with just four days now to go the chicago mayoral candidates are campaigning for those final undecided votes the nine people running for mayor will be crisscrossing the city this weekend elizabeth matthews joins us live from the live desk with the latest on what happened today. Yeah, hey guys, nine candidates, possibly a runoff election, and the latest poll says 14% of voters are still undecided. Mayor Lori Lightfoot echoing her call to the city that she deserves four more years. Uh -oh. <laughs> The incumbent popped in an Andersonville record store Friday to rub shoulders with music lovers and potential supporters. Mayor Lori Lightfoot talking about her viability in a potential runoff with frequent leader of the polls, Paul Vallis. I am the only candidate on the ballot that can beat Paul Vallis. I trust the voters of the city to see right through the veneer of credibility that he's trying to pull over voters eyes and to mask himself from something that he is not recently retired mm -hmm. congressman bobby rush mm -hmm. showing up in the latest endorsement ad for mayor lori lightfoot lori is good for the city of chicago she's good <laughs> for south and west side other candidates were spread out all over the city paul vallis meeting with voters at the muslim community center let me give thanks to God for all my blessings flow. Chewy Garcia holding a get out the vote walk and talk at Daly Plaza. And fifth ward council member Sophia King making a lunch stop in Inglewood to sit with and listen to residents. J. Mal Green cast his ballot early on the south side. The young candidate feeling confident about his shot at mayor, not believing any recent poll numbers that puts him toward the bottom of the pack. We're already seeing an unprecedented president, amount of voters come out, uh, and I think that we're going to see um, a shocker on February 28th. And of course, you guessed it, there are more events to come this weekend for those nine candidates. Mayor Lori Lightfoot will hold a rally tomorrow, 2 p.m. Brandon Johnson has several events scheduled. For oh, my God. Lori Lightfoot. You know what that, uh, uh, you know what that Braun did a couple days ago? Go ahead. Oh. I was just talking about unpresent, unprecedented, like unprecedented, please. Unprecedented. Hey, a couple of days ago, know, Lori Lightfoot. know what he was trying to say. She asked the black and Spanish voters to help her win the election. She said it on the news like four days ago. Wow. Yeah, I think she called Chewy Garcia Speedy Gonzalez. <laughs> oh, yeah. Are you serious? He gets away with that because that's she's what black. I heard. I wouldn't be surprised because well, for that reason she, exactly. She does a lot for the city. I mean, she she uh, gets the uh, bears to, to to leave. I mean, after a hundred years in the city. Yeah, she Damn. gets the Chicago Bears out and invites the Sun Bears in. <laughs> Sun Bears always been in Chicago. Well, to Aren't downtown. Really yeah. How much time yeah, he get? Yeah. He got 20 years for something. He got so many cases. I don't even follow that shit no more. He ain't getting out for the first shit. So all this other shit is just concurrent, man. Um, just going after money. What the fuck is this? Police across the country are warning of potential anti-Jewish hate crimes this weekend. They say extremist what? groups have posted online calling for a national day of hate tomorrow. WGN Damn! <laughs> <laughs> we're fishermen. 
fun. Fisherman ain't even here. Fisherman must be prepping for tomorrow. Very man. suspicious. <laughs> he's busy. <laughs> yeah. he's getting, he's you gotta wash his hood. Yeah, man. <laughs> Fisherman, man, get the hell. Um, Javier Cito says, "Release to families sums up the current state of affairs. It takes a village to destroy a society." <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Donovan is live in Lakeview with the very latest on this. Alyssa. Yeah, good evening, Ben and Lourdes. Several law enforcement agencies and Jewish community groups have issued community alerts tonight and throughout this week, warning of what some anti-Semite groups have dubbed a national day of hate, which is set to take place tomorrow. Unfortunately, you can say it lightly, this is the world we live in now. Dan Goldwyn with the Jewish United Fund and Jewish Federation of Chicago has been in constant contact with law enforcement as neo-Nazi and anti-Semite groups have announced a national day of hate this Saturday. Chicago police sent out a community alert warning the public to be vigilant and situationally aware throughout the weekend with specific focus on largely Jewish communities like Rogers Park, Westridge and Lakeview. According to CPD, online extremists have advised followers to vandalize, place flyers, and perform other acts of so-called activism against the Jewish community. We're not aware of any direct credible threats. We've talked to every level of law enforcement we could think of, but we want to make sure we were safe, so we notified the community. The community's taking appropriate steps, but in the meantime, we hope tomorrow people are Jewish the way they want to be Jewish. Illinois State Police also issued an alert advising heightened awareness and encouraging people to call 911 if they see anything suspicious. Goldwyn says the entire Jewish community has been made aware of the messages that are circulating online. We made sure we notified all the institutions in Chicago, synagogues, schools, agencies that take care of those who need help so that they have appropriate security measures in place. And while the community is on high alert, Goldwyn wants people to continue to do what they normally would, go to services and attend celebrations. But in the meantime, we hope tomorrow people are Jewish the way they want to be Jewish. Go to, go to Shabbat services, bar and bat mitzvahs, weddings. We hope they all do that. The Anti-Defamation League has also issued a statement regarding the threats that are happening over the weekend, saying that they are also in constant contact with law enforcement and are monitoring the situation. Why don't they ever wow. name the groups? Name the groups and say and shame them instead of just random anti-Semites. Oh, that's yeah. why. We, we know it's the probably gliders. somebody on the left. <laughs> It's the gliders. Yeah, this ain't something. Something we just gonna run up on you. You gonna find out about the threat after you getting up off the ground. Yeah, or, yeah, or he just like... got the uh, Hebrew Israelites on a corner <laughs> cursing you all out. Yeah, it's yeah. More, most likely the gliders, though. I mean, it's like when you you know have six thirteen year olds dead in a shooting. You know, it's some people. Well, listen to what the threats were. Unless it's inside of school, and then other... it's gliders. Uh, that's not entirely true. I think we've proved that quite clearly here. <laughs> Hell yeah. Look that's what the threats doing. were, though. It was vandalization and and threats. It. That's it. <laughs> but nothing's going to happen. Like, the day's going to come and nothing's going to happen. They, they hit yeah. you for another crystal mark. It seems like. They want that, they want that to happen. So they can yeah. keep. Being they would love that. They keep, they keep harping on about being victims or something. Come on, it ain't happening. The media wants to hype it up as that's what's going to happen, but you know, it's just talk. Yeah. We're following breaking news out of Libertyville tonight. That's where sheriffs say a man attacked a mother in her driveway, then stole her SUV with her child still inside. This happened just after 3.30 this afternoon. WGN's Dana Revick is joining us from the Libertyville Hospital where the victim was taken with injuries. Dana. Well, the good news, first of all, is that this young child was located and is safe uh, tonight, was not injured. But this mother uh, recovering here at Advocate Condell Medical Center in Libertyville were told in serious but stable condition after this incident happened in her very own driveway earlier this afternoon. Around 3.30 p.m., the 34-year-old woman had just returned home and brought one of her children inside. When she came back out to her car to get her two-year-old son, she says two men in this white BMW pulled into her driveway behind her car. 
a man got out the past think about how brazen that is like that you can't feel safe like this didn't happen at the mall this didn't happen at the gas station they followed this woman from the pet store <laughs> Yeah, she wants to walk yeah. like So another, uh, you know, this is how we know this was some people as well. The incredible brazen brutality of it. Yeah. Following you. They're doing a lot of that now. The, the following is a telltale side, too. Um, and over nothing of value. They turned this six months pregnant gl glider into roadkill. I mean, her, 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 look at where she lives at. Where's her baby daddy? It all happened in probably like a minute and 30 seconds. She probably got a husband, Brown Sugar. In, in the no, white world, we call that the husband. Where's yeah, exactly. baby daddy? He's either at work or in the house. He might be at work. He might be work. in jail. Yeah, unlikely. <laughs> Libertyville. Yeah, man, you glad as y'all got liberty from the fucking um, British, man, for this, all this shit to happen. Libertyville, man. I'm sure it's not a lot of sons in Libertyville, man. 30 p.m., the 34-year-old woman had just returned home and brought one of her children inside. When she came back out to her car to get her two-year-old son, she says two men in this white BMW pulled into her driveway behind her car. A man got out the passenger side and struggled to get into her white Volkswagen Atlas as she tried to get to her child. That offender driving away, knocking her to the ground and running her over. She was Damn. able to call 911 for help. About a half hour later, someone on Lakeside Drive in Waukegan called police to report they saw two vehicles enter a parking lot and then abandon a small child, then drive away, leaving the little boy who started wandering towards the street. The car <laughs> Jesus Look, do you know how Christ. freaking so cold easy. it is right now yeah. in Illinois? It's freezing. And nobody That's gives a easy. damn about this. Almost as cold as it is in Wyoming. And they just left the little boy. I mean, I get it. Okay, I, so Libertyville, 92.22% white, 4.99% Asian, 1.29% mixed race, and 0.77% black. And this is 10,000% sun. <laughs> so they don't have any sun. I've got my here. life on it. <laughs> Without a second thought. <laughs> oh, the BMW with the with the missing rear quarter panel? Oh, yeah. Drive away, leaving the little boy, who started wandering towards the street. The caller ran to rescue the child. Just before 5 p.m., sheriff's deputies found the stolen Volkswagen Atlas abandoned in a parking lot near Kasmir Pulaski and Route 43. They are still looking for the offender's white 2000s model BMW sedan, it has a black bumper and was stolen within the past week from a car dealership in Waukegan. The suspect police uh, are looking for is described as a tall, thin man who was. So they didn't even mention. Rape. They did not even mention that they, while they were uh. escaping, ran the woman over, de destroying her pelvis. So she's in the hospital having emergency surgery to try and save the six-month year old the six month baby right that, that apparently wasn't news worth mentioning i guess Shit. uh can you kick king down the out the chat because he's being very disrespectful we got mods man is the where's the, where's the um where's the um scorpion unit man get king donut out of there man you know Who's who King Donut? I, I don't I, I haven't I'm not that's what I got mods for man I gotta deal with this up here man I can't be dealing with King Donut. Yeah, man. Come on, King Donut, man. What you doing, man? I don't even fucking know you, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scorpion Squad, y'all have my um fucking um blessing to go ahead and knock King Donut, kick him to the curb. It's a white 2000s model BMW sedan. It has a black bumper and was stolen within the past week from a car dealership in Waukegan. The suspect police uh, are looking for is described as a tall, thin man who was last seen wearing a gray hoodie and a light green COVID style mask. A tall, thin man. Anything else about this man you want to tell us about? <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I want to help, man. If I'm ever in Waukegan, man, if I see him, I want to, I want to help you guys out. 
He's leaving out some important The details. suspect police uh, are looking for is described as a tall, thin man who was last seen wearing a gray hoodie and a light green COVID style mask. If you have any information about this crime, you are asked to call the Lake County Sheriff's Department. That number is 847 377 4000. Live at uh, Advocate Condell Medical Center in Libertyville tonight. Dana Rebick, WGN News. All right. Dana, thank you. Yeah, man, this is, this is yikes, man. Yikes. That's terrifying. I can't man. believe they just dropped that kid in a parking lot in like zero degree oh, I weather. Can. I believe it easily. Think about the trauma that woman's going through mentally. She goes from unloading her car to her six, her two year olds wandering near the street somewhere, somewhere in some city she doesn't know, and her six month old. Six uh, month her her baby. pelvis is broken after being run over. She she's it barely a clinging to, to life. Yeah, it takes emergency C section and her baby's in the NICU and she's trying to survive. There you go. This is a fucking atrocity. Yeah, yeah. they ruined her life. They so, ruined her life. Like for me. You ain't got nothing to say about her baby here, Brown Sugar. You always talking about that. No, like, no, look, 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 look. I don't start this shit with me. Because I'm I'm not in the mood right now. Oh, yeah, I'm start I'm this sure. shit with me right now. Okay? I'm just not in the mood right now. What what you what you got to say about the baby? Uh, that this is a fucking atrocity. Okay, well, they, then they, I'm on the same page with you, okay? All right. Well, I'm glad All right, here. then. Don't start that shit with me tonight. I don't got time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. This is, they, 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 I mean, that woman, that woman is going through it. I mean, she went from just everything normal in her life to not knowing the status of both of her kids. Damn. God. Dog. Wow. Good morning. The well, woman not knowing her own status either. Old, suffers she may have injuries, to have a hysterectomy. Able here at Condell well, Medical. concerns for her kids right now. She's hold on. Did they say she needed what? Good morning. The woman who is 34 years old suffered serious injuries, but she is stable here at Condell Medical Center. She's also six months pregnant. Her son Ooh. is okay. He was found abandoned in a Waukegan parking lot. The carjacking and kidnapping happened at about 3.30 Thursday afternoon in unincorporated Libertyville. Okay, so she's all right. I mean, she's decent. I mean, all things, I'm, I'm sure she's drugged up, but they can't drug her up because she got the baby inside of her. Johnny, did you read that somewhere, the emergency C-section? Well, if you were, I, I would say it's pop probable you know oh, all right i thought you read crushed. the last i had heard is that like her pelvis was broken she's in the hospital and i would figure that you know there that'd be pretty dangerous for the uh, baby yeah that's not a good environment man people God. said i don't have nothing to say because a white baby i mean what you want me to say damn i mean i don't want to say shit okay it is fucking sick you are, it's, it's, it's sad. But my mm -hmm. thing is, as a woman, when you're driving and if you see a vehicle tr following you for so long, I would never pull it in my driveway. I will call the police. Well, and she, she doesn't live with the mentality like she's in a goddamn war zone because she doesn't that's, that's, that's reality. Okay, that's, I don't that's live reality. A, that's not, no, as a woman, if you see a car following you, a strange vehicle, following you after a while maybe you should want to call the police and say hey it's a car that's been following me yeah. for a while that's true that's though me. actually if that's it's how in, I, especially that's if it's how filled I with mass sun men that's how i go on google me. maps and find the nearest police station and make them follow me there just any damn, <laughs> anybody you think you might think anyone's telling you telling you for, for a certain distance yeah you should you should be suspicious well did it indicate that she knew because a lot of people She's got a kid crying in the back. She's got another two-year-old. They just came from the pet store. I don't think maybe she was paying yeah, attention she too might hard, not, which, yeah, you know, she, maybe did she deserve it for that? I, I, no. No one's saying that. Don't even say that she – because nobody she even said that. said that she deserved it. Yeah, fair yeah, enough. Nobody no. is saying it, so don't even bring that up. No, I think I think that you got to – like I say, man, you have to be aware now. There's a new re – we're all living in a new reality. 
like we said with the juice crew guy last night you can't sit in your car anymore like you just can't there's certain things you can't do one of those things is is when you're leaving the store you cannot not notice the cars that are behind you especially Liberty when, Hill is halfway to milwaukee it's almost at the border of that it's well outside chicago so she's riding through windy roads, one lane roads, and she should have, she, she might have, she probably could have noticed. But see, when you're riding out into the suburbs, it's nothing to see a car behind you for a long time because that might be a car that's driving to the suburbs too. I don't know, but she's, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a new reality. Man. Yeah, well, except for the 1% of like glider serial killers that might be doing this, it's 99% some people marking gliders. Okay, that she didn't see that black ass in her rearview mirror following her. Well, right. It would have been a much better indicator to know that a bunch of sun men were following her than a random car was following her. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> how can you tell? I mean, how can you but tell? So 90% tell of those have like. tinted windows so yeah. that you can't even see inside there. Right. It used to be 10 years ago, you could see the driver through the windshield, but nowadays you can barely ever see that. But if they stole if, if they stole the car, a lot of these cars are stolen. So yeah, they got tents on the back window, the back, but not necessarily on the front window. You could be followed by extraterrestrials. It'd be less dangerous than being followed by sun men. <laughs> okay, we get it. A uh, plea for Still, justice okay. tonight in the unsolved murder of a South Suburban businessman and father. Tavares Davis ran the Funnel Cake Man with his wife in Orland Park in Maryland. They killed the Funnel Cake Man. You did this story already. I did? When? Um, a while oh, ago. No, this is an update on it. Uh, I know, I'm just saying you did this story. About eight months ago. Murder of a South Suburban businessman and father. Tavares Davis ran the Funnel Cake Man with his wife in Orland Park in Maryville, Indiana. He was shot and killed last August in Dalton. His family said he was found with no valuables on him, no car keys, no wallet or jewelry. Six months later, they're now offering a $5,000 reward for information that leads to an arrest and charges in his murder. His widow tells WGN it has been a struggle to run the business and raise their children without him. It's been a nightmare, to say the least. The murder of my husband should not go unpunished. Those who are responsible should be held accountable. Um, and you will be held accountable. Davis says there are solid leads in the case, but Dalton detectives need more information. Crime Stoppers is offering an additional $1,000 for any tip that leads to the suspect or suspects. Man, they killed the fucking funnel cake, man. Shit. Let's do one more city, man, before we get out of here, man. Um, he had a chain on, I guarantee you that shit yeah. meant funnel cake. It said TFCM or something. The funnel cake, man. Yeah. TFCM. Wow, man. Oh. Hey, Alka, I have a question for you. Go ahead, man. So do you think that if they raised uh, the amount of those rewards, more people would? No. You know, I hate to use, no. no. Hell no. no. Okay, I just, I'm just asking. No, there's no solutions. You're talking about solutions. There are no solutions. You'd have well, to give lottery money to get reports. <laughs> well, well, you're that, still that, not going to find a killer. No, I, I get it. I get it. I was just asking. I, I've got a whole different uh, way to a solution, but it's it's not a pretty one. But that's what we're hoping to never get to, right? No, I think Probably. we're ready for that. Well, I mean, my my, my serious thought is, um, and it's it's ugly one, but it's going to have to be a red state with a big blue city with a lot of crime, and it's going to take the state to step in with the National Guard. And yeah, I know it's really ugly, but this is what I was referring to the other day was it's going to need some a little bit of invitation from the Sun community. And I don't think it'll take a high percentage, but at least a few people. And like you guys, like... I think you guys are stars and you think you're the only ones. I think there's a lot of sun people who feel exactly the way you do, oh, yeah. but are terif terrified to go in public. And that's, and, and you guys get me so excited because I didn't know there was any sentiment in, in the sun community that, that felt this way until this channel. I mean, you know, a little bit here, here and there, um, you got the Candace Owens and I think she's awesome. But you guys are, are flat out telling it like it is. I'm a mammy. <laughs> oh, this one, yeah. the chest, the chest said no, I'm no. a mammy, and that uh, I care for some. I don't, I don't and... mean to give the wrong impression either. I'm usually a brown mammy supporter. Okay. 
So that's no, what I. No, that's what I am. No, brown sugar. You know, you you've got uh, some different opinions than than a lot of, a lot of us, but your opinion is super valuable too because. In the end, you you know, at, at, at the end of the day, we all want to see the same thing, which is a lot less people dying. And uh, I, I think the the reason that it's gone on for decades, my, my personal opinion, is because the people that are in charge are the racist Democrats, and they just don't care. And to be honest, if I'm being really honest, if thugs are killing other thugs, I really don't care. My problem is there's zero excuse for any collateral damage, not one freaking baby, not one elderly, per not one person, period. And that's the problem is that those collateral deaths are never going to stop. And like I said, I think the only solution is pick one city. Uh, you know, we've got a whole slew of problem cities, but start with one and watch the difference in crime rate. The, again, my opinion, if we can show a massive reduction in crime, specifically murder, we might be on to something. Uh, well, let me, let I mean, me... the 94 crime bill was begged for by the black community. Yeah, right. I agree. Yep. Um, but me... I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, Ock. Go ahead. Let, 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 me, let me just show you. You said you said, um, you said you want a, a rewards, right? Okay, let's, let's see what that looks like. More rewards. Want a what? Good morning to you, John. Yes, we all know it. Authorities oh. have talked about uh, the 